All right, guys, so welcome back to today's series. As you can note, um, I finally got my camera working. I don't know what it was. Um, sorry for the last couple of videos. You probably just been hearing my voice, but you haven't been seeing anything. But I finally figured out what it was. So I had my camera plugged into a USB port, but it's kind of funny because it required like a USB 3.0 and it was having some driver issues. And it kept going in and out, in and out, and then I'm like, okay, well, it's probably a Cappy camera. Um, but it was Logitech, so, you know, the brand is not too bad. But nevertheless, I figured out, through some driver issues, um, old drivers, um, took them off, reset it, and finally it popped in. All right, so today, what we are going to do, hopefully you can hear me, um, we are going to be building and continuing on with the lab series. Now... On my virtual machine, so sorry if I look up because I have like multiple screens that I'm working on. I have um, a screen in the back that's recording, um, my NAS server over there, and then I have like a couple of screens right here in front of me that I work with. And then I have a streaming screen over there where I show you all the information. So it's kind of huge. So I look up from time to time. So you'll see me like all over the place, but it's just for training purposes because I'm trying to get you to um see what i'm working and you can follow along all right all right so um basically what we're going to be talking about today we're going to be focusing on setting up active directory on your first domain controller all right so this is the part i want you guys to pay attention there's multiple ways you know me i like to show you powershell as well because you want to get into it right um code free is always good because if you want to click 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 but there's nothing wrong with learning how to Apply this in PowerShell and walk away and go get you some coffee, right? Every chief wants coffee, right? All right, so um, the domain controller is ready. It's up here, all right? So basically what we're going to be doing, take a step back. We will be building this out. We're going to promote the... the um, the box because right now it's just a regular server so we're going to promote it to actually what's called a domain controller and then we're going to add active directory domain services right then we're not going to install dns normally you can do them together however when it comes to dns dns is a little funny and i've seen a lot of folks when they do dns they install it together but they don't configure dns on the spot and they tend to forget some important rules so because i'm going through step by step with you i want to take you into a series where i show you step by step good little tweaks how to get your entire box up and running so today we're just going to focus on the domain controller getting it promoted we're going to add um we're going to install a new forest um add adds active directory um, domain services um, we're going to go over the topology a little bit so first of all when you do active directory um, it includes what's called um, a schema. You can also find um, a global catalog. Um, it has a query or curry or how we use a curry, Q U E R I curry, um, not like curry chicken, okay? But um, a curry and an index mechanism that's built in, and then it has a replication service, right? So let me start from the top. The schema, the schema is basically what defines the classes or the objects that's inside of the the directory per se, right? So this is what sets like your limitations, the things you can and can't do on the objects. Um, like for example, the names can't be too long, um, and so forth, right? That's where the schema comes into play. I'm not going to go too deep into it because um, that's going to take forever just explaining it. But I just want you to understand whenever you hear a schema, that's kind of what you're looking for, right? All right. So the global catalog. So now the global catalog, it contains like um, information about every single object that's actually inside of the directory. So it basically allows like your users and your administrators to find information regarding what's inside of the domain. So let's say you're looking for a user and they're inside of like a subdomain or somewhere else. This is where the global catalog comes into play and allow you to find those people that's actually inside of it. You find that data, the group, the users and all that good stuff. Right. And then the query piece now, that's basically um, it's like a search feature. Right. So if something was published on the network, um, like users, applications or whatever, um, the properties 
are connected to the query. So you can basically query for like a user, query for an object, you know, um, maybe some services, applications, and so forth. All of these things I'm telling you about, you can look up, um, do some research, read up about it. Um, I don't want to get too deep. I want to go in more into the hands-on piece so you guys can see how it's put together. Now, maybe later on we can go back and start studying these things, but um, if you're trying to be a technician, you're going to have to do some of the homework, right? I'm going to try to walk you through the step-by-step, -step, but reading up on the, the, the abbreviations, reading up on the, the terms and stuff like that, you might have to also put in some work to get that working, right? And then you have us also what's called like a replication um, service. So basically, this is what distributes um, information across the network. You have multiple domain controllers. We only have one right now, but you can have many. The replication service is what holds the information from one domain controller, and then it sends it over to another one so it can replicate the data. So if you have like say multiple sites set up, New York and like Boston and Atlanta, and a user was built or created in a New York site, and you don't want it to replicate across to the other sites, you can keep it in just one site. But if you're trying to replicate, like say the data across, so let's say if the user is working in New York and then they move to Atlanta and they're trying to log into that same domain, right? Then once you create it inside of um, Active Directory, and if it's replicating across properly, then the user can just go there and log in. Now, some places do not allow cross replication you might see especially where you work in your organization if you go from one side to the next they're separate they don't really um do that replication function it's probably kind of could be private or they just don't share in the network right so you will see that as well all right so without further ado let's get into it let's get into it so up here i'm working on a box dc if you're following on the segments before we already started this I want to pull up um, my cut sheet. You know, we've been working on this for a while. Like I said, this is a working document. FQDN, when you hear about FQDN, you think about fully qualified domain name, right? So this is basically what you're looking for. This is what I'm going to call my domain. It's going to be Chief Home Lab. So it's going to be chief.home.lab. Now, out there in the real world, you will have... Um, it's so many different names. You will see probably ds.army.mil, or you can see like um, whatever the structures are that they will use. It's, it's, it's just basically the name that, you, you know, they'll use, right? You can see, um, for example, when you, your email address, you see the extension that it is, it's tied to something, right? So... Microsoft.com, if you get like an Outlook email, it would just be Outlook.com that represents that ending of the, the domain structure, right? But if you have a domain tied to that, the domain could be like lab.outlook.com, right? Fully qualified domain name. Um, you have navy.mail. If you have a site that's built on navy.mail, it could just be like um, swimmers.navy.mail, something like that. Right, so that's where all the swimmers for the Navy would be. You can have maybe soldiers that army that mail where all the soldiers would go. You know, just those are just examples. Um, these probably don't exist. Um, don't charge me on these things. I'm just making stuff up for example. All right, so mine will be chief that home that lab. Um, this doesn't exist on the outside world, it's not real, it's just something that I made up for um, the purpose of this. Um, lab presentation. All right, so we need to pull back up our um, domain controller. Let's go ahead and pop it open, right? Now, we're going to start this box. This is this is basically um, asking me if I want to do a, a checkpoint, right? So I probably corrupted this, or did I not? You want to revert to a previous one? Sure. I think I had to save a checkpoint. And checkpoints will go over later too, but it's always good if you configure something. 
um, select a checkpoint. Or if you don't understand something, create a checkpoint so you can go in and play with it. And then if you mess it up, you can just revert back to the checkpoint, right? And that's one of the good features of um, having it because when you go to action and you do a checkpoint, right? Right before I do this domain setup, I can just go back and revert it. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first checkpoint. And I want you guys, if you're following, go ahead and do it. The checkpoint right here is going to say, we're going to call this before ADDS install, right? This is a way for you to save your configurations so that you don't have to go all the way back. Think about it if you're playing like Super Mario and um, you fall off the cliff. They don't take you all the way back to the beginning of the game unless you had like no lives left. But for real, like if you had like six lives, then they continue from a checkpoint. So whenever you ate that last um, big grape or whatever he be coins, Whenever you had like a thousand coins or whatever, I don't remember Super Mario, but you know what I'm saying. Like that checkpoint, that's where you're going back to. Similar function to here. We're creating a checkpoint. So this is where our last configuration was done successfully. And we don't want to go all the way back to start over. So when you start, create this checkpoint here, name it before ADDS install, so that if you mess it up during the configuration, all you have to do is revert back to a checkpoint, right? So if you're following along, go ahead and click yes. All right. If you look at the bottom normally, once the checkpoint is being created, sometimes it will show you that it's happening. It will be like way down here somewhere, right? Um, yeah, so this should be, this should be good, right? All right, so let's go ahead and log in. Now, logging in, I had um, one of my coworkers ask me this yesterday. When it comes to virtual machines, how do we log in? It's funny. Up here, under action, control, alt, delete, or log you in. But if you look over to the right, if you try to use a keyboard, it's control, alt, end. Now, I think on VMware, I think it's control, alt, insert. Right? So... Just note to remember, if you're trying to do control or delete, that is only going to work for the host. So the proper way to get into your virtual machine is click inside of your virtual machine, right? Click in here, and then you want to do control alt, and you're going to look for insert. Where's insert? I don't, can't find it on my keyboard. I have this fancy looking keyboard, and I don't know where it's at. Oh, I want to do end, so I got to do console. I got to do control alt shift. Um, control or shift <laughs> and on my end, but no worries, you got this one up here. But you know what I'm talking about, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and log in to our system. Hopefully, I remember this password uh, set. You want to write them down, you want to write them down. The passwords are important. All right, so here we are. Here we are. All right, um, that little box that pops up is something new about the new admin center. You basically can use one box to configure multiple um, servers and stuff like that. We'll touch on that later on to, to come. But I just want to walk you guys through the basics right now. Right? Trying to stay away from all the advanced stuff. Less questions. Practice the basics. Once you master the basics, then we talk about um, advanced techniques and so forth. All right. So Active Directory um, roles and features right here. Now, when we start off our regular servers, after you configured everything we walked through before, this is where you'll start. You'll go to Tools, obviously, and if it's already installed, it's gonna show up right here, right? This is where it's gonna start. Now, if it's not installed, you go to Manage, and you're gonna add roles and features. And then it's the same thing too. If you find something that's here, and you want to get rid of it, you'll go back to manage and you'll do remove the roles and features. Sometimes you might have a role. All of these are roles and features that are already installed on the server. And you can go ahead and remove them if you don't want them to. Right? Same thing. Um, you know what? I might make the session for PowerShell separate from this one. So we can do the click, 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 click here. And then I'll go back and I'll show you how to just do all of this through PowerShell, so it's not confusing. All right, so we're gonna go all, click on add roles and features. This is always going to be 
the first step you see you can read all of this information it's going to tell you everything you need to have before so as you can see remember it says the administrator account has a strong password we set that in the last step network settings such as a static ip do you remember that we gave us a static ip now one of the good things you want to do for static ip you want to go over here and you want to check that make sure that this matches the cut sheet right so change adapter settings this is the uh, one that we created for test purposes but now this needs to match my cut sheet okay so go back to my cut sheet and um we're going to change these to what it's supposed to be got like three screens running over here all right but this good server all right so dc01 should be a dot 11 right and then it's asking you for dns so dns is normally going to be on your domain controllers since this is the first domain controller that i'm building i'm just going to go ahead and put back 11 and then i can also use 12 because 12 will be the second dns server that i bring in right so we can fix this and call this um 12 and then if you notice the ip settings also change because we're not working on a 192 no more right so our network is actually on a 172 where are you where are you come back cut sheet yeah so if you notice over here we do have 192 and this is for when we build out our router later i'm going to show you how to get there but my lab network is going to be a 172.16.1.0 slash 24 right with a wild card of flipping this the network mass is always a flip of your wild card so when you start doing subnetting and you get into the deep end of it you'll notice that 255 255 2550 when you flip it for the wild card it'll be 000 255 same thing here you just go from backwards so if you read it this way you will change this 255 to a zero 255 to, and, and that's all subnet i'm not going to get into that stuff um because i don't want to confuse them let's stay on track i i, I tend to get off track a little, real fast all right so 11 we need to say 11 and 12 and it's a 172 16 and 1 all right so let's go back to make sure we put in the right ip address 172 16 1 16 and if that happens see you can just hit the dot key 1 dot 11 right so what are we running what is my mass is it 255 255 or is it 255 for my subnetting gurus? What are we using? What are we using? Right there. We're going to use that mass right now. Right? It's kind of weird because I know if you're mixing up class B and C, I can literally do 255 255 Right? But like I said, for this lab purposes, we're just going to go with 255 255 if it's scream at me, um, then I probably got my subnetting wrong. My teacher will be yelling at me right now. One way you can test this out, once you're here, hit tab, you will see, right? Because it picks up 255-255-00, right? Had too many inside 16. That one that um, my gateway is going to be my RAS server. All right, so whatever my get my RAS server should be, this should be my gateway. So one 16.1.1 will be my internal gateway, right? And I need to fix this because this should be so I'm not confused myself. It should be zero zero. Um, like I said, that would be two five five because it's uh we're working on the class B <laughs> address. Um, so I, just so I don't confuse you because I made an error right there. All right. Um. All right. So there we are. All right. It's one seven two sixteen one at eleven. We're going to be working in the class B. So two five five two five five zero zero. And then the gateway will be that one. 
right? And then we'll change this as well to 172.16.1.11. And you can do what's called a loopback. You can also do um, a 127.0.0.1, which it loops back to yourself. But I don't like using one, one. I don't like using loopback edges. I like using direct connections um, back to the server itself. Right. So twelve because twelve will be my alternate DNS once it comes in line. Right. So I'm gonna set it up that way. So if you're following the cut sheet and we're using this, right? As long as you have everything set up, that one is gonna be the router to come when we build it in. Eleven is gonna be the IP address for the server. And then the DNS, obviously, because it's this server, it will reroute back to itself. And then the second DNS that will come into play later will also be um, will also be .12. All right. Let's go ahead and click OK. Click Close. It's going to identify. So we want to make sure that the IP address is good and it's set up. Now, if we go back to where were we right there so the network settings such as a static is configured and then the most security updates we're not going to worry about updates because we'll use wsus later to push all our updates but this is just basic starting information right and like i was telling you earlier if you read this it will tell you how to remove the roles and features so let's go ahead and click next now we're going to do a role-based feature based installation so the, we'll be next as you can see it need this needed to be refreshed because it was still picking up um uh, what you call it we're still picking up the old ip address and how you fix this you can just basically cancel if you want to see um because the ip address was wrong we can go in and close this out right so i like to disable it so no traffic is going in kind of like clear the cache or get a queue re-enable this Just like you reset in the network card. Um, and then let's go back to add roles and features. Don't know who's calling, not gonna answer. It's not important, you guys are important. All right, so this haven't flushed itself yet, but it's not really a big deal. It's just showing the, the last IP address that this um, DNS or this DC was, was um, this DC was using and you know you know before i go because i know you guys might ask this question so let's try to fix this real quick before we go so let's go to ip config slash and it shouldn't really be an issue i think that's nope messed that up i think it's one word all right so flush the dns and then let's do um No, we don't need to GVP update, I think, because, um, yeah, so let's flush the DNS real quick, and let's cancel this, just to be, I just want to make sure I show you guys the right thing, right, this right here, um, make sure this is not picking up a wrong IP, because we did set it, right, okay, let's go back to advanced, making sure that this is set properly, and this is set properly, and then inside of DNS, they're actually pulling out the proper Right, this is registered, so this is good. And we're just double checking to make sure everything that we have is working properly. This is how it's supposed to be, right? And like I said, once everything is good to go, um, you can disable, enable, disable, enable, right? And you're just trying to clear the clear the queue so you don't see that mess um showing up. Hopefully it changes um um this right now. Let's close this out and let's start back a fresh. All right, let's go back in now and let's see if how long it took. There you go. So it fixed it. There you go. There you can see we fixed it because I know someone's going to ask this question. Okay. Why does it show this and it shows something else? So let's do the right thing and fix it before we go along. So then your questions are answered um, on the spot. 
IP address that is picking up now matches our cut sheet and it's the wrong the right one now let's go ahead and click next now when you are here as you can see these are all the roles that can be oh my gosh let me turn this phone off these are all of these are all the roles i'm sorry man for folks just calling me left and right need help and stuff um these are all the roles that you can install and then if you look over here you have features so you have server roles and then you have server features as well features normally support your roles so sometimes you have like remote access and then there's a feature that also comes with it as well um so just so you know that these are like the main ones that go for the server and then features are something that just support or expand on that role itself All right easy way to remember so we're just doing active directory services and as you can see look this is all the active directory domain services that will be installed right it will come with rsat which remote server administrative tools for you guys that don't remember what it sounds like all of these roles right will be added always make sure you do management tools and then you're going to add the features like i said the features expand upon the roles okay got it now dns like i said is normally something we will check here i'm going to bypass it for now because i want you to focus on just getting adds up and running now when we are here these are just optional features that we can install all together right i'm not going to click anything here i'm just going to go ahead and click next because before i get into these i like to try to go over it a little bit especially if you don't understand or if you've never seen it before so we're not just installing stuff and it's just there and you're not using it and by default the good practice is anything that you're not using or you don't need you need to remove it right this is just another way for folks to use services against you that you really don't need right like open up firewalls and all that stuff and different ports because most of these do use different ports to play with and you're just asking yourself for a lot of trouble if you're not using these services and they're not configured properly I go ahead and click next. Um, you can read all of this stuff about ADD. It will tell you it stores information about users, other devices, stuff like that we talked about in the beginning. Go ahead and click next. Restart the device. I like to click that yes because it will give you a fresh if, if you need to restart it. Now, one thing I wanted to show you right here. You see where it says export configuration setting? You can save this to what's called an XML file, right? And later on, if you're trying to reinstall or automate the same installation on other servers, once you export this configuration file, you can use PowerShell to pull this XML file on other servers and then you can remotely do it. So if I do export right here, it's asking me to save this configuration as a template. And this is how, like I said, you can build out multiple um, servers you can build out multiple systems just using powershell it makes life easy so even though you see like some folks they have all these servers built out you don't have to do all of that stuff um by hand anymore it's powershell has kind of made and scripting had made our lives a little bit easier as administrators all right this is basically it and we're going to go ahead and click install normally depending on the speed of your computer um this shouldn't take that long and you can basically close this too because it will tell you right here you can close it and once it's ready you will see up top right here you'll get a little message and the notification that it's ready to be um configured all right so just, let's go ahead and wait for that a little bit and while i'm at this if you have any questions um, please go ahead and, and comment below. Um, I'm willing to answer as much as I can. I want to teach you guys, show you stuff that I personally know. If I don't know it, I'll do some research and I will surely get back to you. All right. Whenever you see this triangle, it's giving you information or notifications that something here needs your attention. All right. If you see this red, it also means something needs your attention on your servers when you're managing your servers okay so always check up here it's like an event log basically it's telling you we need 
to finish configuring this server. All right, the blue means that this already happened. It's just information, right? And it's just like road signs. If you ever remember, if you remember when you're driving, um, if you see something in blue, kind of like information going somewhere, and then the green signs are like also information as well. But then the yellows are like warning. You need to yield, depending on where you're at. Um, maybe it could be like a slope coming. And then if it's red, obviously you need to probably stop, slow down, look left and right before you cross. Something similar to that. I don't know if my analogy is correct, but you get what I mean. All right, so we are about to promote this server now to what's called a domain controller. Like I said, by default, it's just a server until we promote it. So one, we have already did the installation of the, the features and the roles, right? But that doesn't mean it's configured. Now this is a, the, the fun part. All right, let's go ahead. Now this is where you're going to go through the de deployment configuration, right? Remember, this is a brand new box. So we're going to add a new forest. If you were adding a new controller to an existing domain, let's say we built this already and you will see this later when we bring in another domain controller, the settings of this will change, right? So it will be a new domain controller to an existing domain. But since we have not built any domain yet, and this is the first domain controller, the first box that we're bringing in, what we're doing, we're calling it, it's called a farce, like the Amazon, big farce, right? So that's the first one that was there. So it's called a Amazon. It's a big white virus. Now, any of the new little trees that you plant, there will just be a domain controller being added to that forest. Right? Like I said, my, my analogy is today is kind of off. All right. So if you remember what I said, chief home that lab is my FQDN. That's what I'll be using it. So right here, the root domain, that's what I want to call it. Hopefully it takes it because sometimes this thing acts up. All right. So chief that home dot lab right um this is going to be the name that i want to use right and we're going to click next it's going to basically check to see if this exists on the network that's what it's looking for if it doesn't exist it's going to create a whole new forest for us right that's basically how it goes. When you bring in a new domain controller later, it does the same exact thing, but then it's gonna contact the first domain controller or other domain controllers out there and say, hey, does this name exist? And if it does, we have a new guy that's trying to join your team, right? The functioning level, normally right here, is um, Windows Server 2016. And when we go into this right here, this is for going back for compatible, um, like backwards compatibility, right? We want to set it to the highest compatible as possible. Function level and the forest level, 2016. We're not going all the way back to 2008, right? But you can change these if you need to. Now, specify the capabilities. Domain name, um, excuse me, DNS. Will this be a DNS server? Absolutely. Global catalog? Absolutely. It needs to keep it. Now, when we talk about RODC, read only domain controller, if you have sites that you want to not share information, this is where your read only domain controllers will be. But also, this is where you can have domain controllers on your site that you could have administrators play with, but it does not replicate over to your other domains um, controllers. So let's say they mess something up and it's only a read only, it doesn't really affect your entire site, right? So we'll talk about read only domain controls later, but just so you can understand what we're doing. Now we need to set a password. All right, let's set a strong password. Let's see if it takes it. All right, um, more about domain controls right here. You can read it. All right, let's go. You will always see this. Right, it will tell you about the DNS cannot be created because of the parent zone cannot be found, and it's la da da da. Yeah, I don't think I've never seen this. Um, right, but it's telling you right here that 
You should manually create the delegation to the server of the parent zone to ensure reliable re name resolution from the outside domain to the lab that I'm working, chief home that lab. Now, this is where I was saying you need to configure DNS properly later to make this work. This warning sign, a lot of folks avoid looking at this. They never probably read this properly, even though the warning signs are there. You know what I mean? They never, ever read this thing properly. And this is exactly what it's telling you. Okay. So DNS needs to be configured later. All right. Make sure you, know, you make note of that. And net bias, it will take normally the first piece of the fully qualified domain name and it will show up right there. So you should see chief up top. There you go. So since it's chief that home that lab, you will see chief that shows up. Now, this is the easy part because it's just shortening and uh, sh making it a little bit shorter, All right? I'm gonna click next. Now, there are instances where you can separate your database um, from your log files and, and these things. So that's when you get into the advanced piece. You can have your database loaded somewhere else and then your log files somewhere else as well. And then your sys volume somewhere else. This is where we go into the very complicated process of building out AD on a organizational level. Because if your database is separate and let's say something gets corrupted in AD, it doesn't sit on the same blade as Windows. So these are like good practices. If you have additional, um, or you built these with additional, I would say hard drive space when you want to build this out properly, then you'll separate like your database from your log files and your sys volume. For now, default, we're in training. Don't worry about this stuff right now. This is more on an advanced level, so just go ahead and click next. I need you to understand the basics first. Like I said, we can go into the advanced mode. Now, all of this, you can view the script. This is what the script will look like when we're doing it in PowerShell later on. All right, as you can see, this is how it will look right there. And all you have to do is basically tell, um, Tell PowerShell exactly what you're trying to create and let it run this, let it do its stuff for you. So am I going to save this? Absolutely. Let's go ahead and save as on the desktop. Let's save it as. So we'll talk about running that later on. All right. So everything is good to go. We're going to click next. And this is where it's going to verify all the settings. Give me my pre-checks and let me know that based on what I'm asking it for, if it can do it. Pre-checks normally take about a few minutes or so. And uh, I want to know how you guys are doing so far. Um, we should be at number five as of today. And there we go. Pre-rex have been um, check they're passed successfully now we can click install to begin and let it roll and right here like i said i will pause and once it's complete we'll continue all right so once it's finished you should see this is going to tell you that the server was successfully configured as you can see real quick and then it's going to restart This will change the login settings as well, because once the domain controller is now, once the server is now actually a domain controller, you remember how we were logging in earlier as just administrator? Then this time you should see the settings change a little bit, right? It will not just be straight administrator anymore. You, you should see a domain login, and then also you have the option to log in locally. All right, but this is a, a main ingredient. Well, <laughs> ingredient. This is a, a key step into getting your domain online up and running. All right, so 
as you can see down here, you have a brief description that it seems like it's it's back and up and running. So let's go ahead and try to open this up. All right, so there you go. Like I was saying earlier, remember the net bias when we did it. I showed you that it's going to say chief. Great. So this is why it came up like that chief slash administrator. Whenever you see any type of login like this, that means that it is a part of a domain structured. Whatever it might be, it could be DS, it could be Navy, it could be Army, it could be Boo Boo Master, um, McDonald's, whatever. That starting piece slash and then the username is a part of a domain. Now, if I wanted to go to another user, we can go ahead and click down here and um, log in as like a local user or whatever. All right? But for now, let's go ahead and just log back in. You can see that the domain structure was 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 good and we have our first domain controller built out now if you look at your server manager right and you just look over here if you notice when we started before this has grown right it's not the same, right? And that's because, like I said, we added new roles and features. So ADDS is right here, and it is now up and running. You can always pay attention to the warnings and signs down here. It will give you a lot of information about your, um, your Active Directory service, any type of stuff that's happening. It's more like a log. This is where you can find a lot of information. Pay attention to events, right? If your server is crying or you're having information or you're having issues, pay attention to this location. Your event log also will show you a lot of stuff. You can pull that up and figure out what's going on. But this is a great built-in feature where you can see it in real time. If something is not working, like for example, this is crying and saying that it's failed to update Active Directory because of DFS. I have not set up DFS replication yet. Um, I'm going to do that on another step later, but like I said, it's just really good ways for you to troubleshoot when you're having problems, best practices per se. Now let's go to tools and we're going to go to active directory users and computers. That is one of the things that we needed when we installed a domain controller. You also do have sites and services. You have the module for PowerShell. You have domains and trusts, and you have the admin center that I was talking about earlier. We're going to focus on users and computers right now. When we get to sites, I'll show you guys what sites are, are like, domains and trusts later to come. But for right now, just do ADUC. All right. Now, first domain that was built is called the forest. So this is the top level. Right here, as you can see, Chief Home Lab. It is working and we are on the way to magnificent stuff, right? If you pull this all the way also, you'll see Active Directory Services, DC01, this is the first DC, and it is running right here. So if you're trying to get to the fully qualified domain for DC01, it would be dc fqdn which is chief.home.lab, right? Now, this is right here, I, I totally forgot to show you. When you create a new, when you see this little icon here, I apologize. This means that it is actually an organizational unit, right? So whenever you create a new, when you go to new and you're creating a new OU, that's what the little box means, right? Now, what I was trying to explain to you earlier. So for example, this one, if I try to delete it, it clicks yes, try to delete this one yes try to delete this one it says that it can't be deleted because i don't have sufficient privileges to do it and that is because when i was telling you earlier where the confusion was when you go to new and you create a new ou if you have this box checked just like this you're protecting it from accidental deletion right so that is the difference between the two the other ones, as you can see, I was able to delete this one because I put the protection on there. I can't just delete that box um, just like that, right? There's other ways that you'll have to go through to try to delete it. 
Now, going through AD, you have obviously computers. When you create new computers for the first time, this is where they'll go. New users for the first time, they'll go in here. And this is where by default, you have all of your admins and your groups and your users. So anything that you see that has two people beside it is, ma is mainly a security group, right? Of some sort, it could be domain locale, global, universal, whatever. That means it's a group. Now, if it shows us just one person, it's just a user. Here's a way for you to identify. By default, guests for any of your Active Directory boxes should be disabled and renamed. That's like a best practice. And, and we'll go over like, when we talk about group policies later, I will show you what I mean of renaming like your administrator accounts, guest accounts, um, and then you will give them a, a different name, different passwords so that it's not accessible on your network. Okay. And I hope I didn't confuse you guys with that because I was too much coffee. Um, but yeah, so this is what Active Directory structure looks like. Domains, computers, domain controllers by default will go here. Once we set up sites later, I will show you how sites work with different domain controllers. When we're doing IP addresses and the scheme and breaking it down, you will see that we'll have, we'll set up sites and so forth. But for the most part, I think I covered everything we wanted to talk about. We created a new Firebase check, installed Active Directory services, configured Active Directory and promoted, yep. All right, so new computer, if you wanted to do a new computer, I'll just do one for you. This is basically if you wanted to stage it. So based on your cut sheet, remember we went over um, naming convention. So if this was the first computer that I was gonna create, Right here, All right? I need to set up, I need to change this so I can do the copy and paste. I forgot to bring it over. But if that was the name of the first computer, then based on my naming convention, this is how you can stage the computer names um, and then place it in whatever group or location you want. Um, if it's a system that you only want certain people to have access to, you can always change it and only give access to like a certain group of folks or whatever. So if you're doing this by separation and that computer is pre pre stage before they're joined, like if you have a list and you pre stage them by default, it's going to create it in here, but you can change it to move it later and assign the computer to wherever you want to go. Right. It's really simple. Same thing for a new user. You can go ahead and create a new user, right? Go through the process. My phone is going off like crazy. Fill it out by default, right? And we will create a new user here, set up the properties, and you go from there. So let's go ahead and work through the labs real quick, and let's do one together. So new computer. We are going to call this computer... Um, Let's use one from our naming convention. Okay, USNY145. What did I name it? DBP001. All right. All right. So that's going to be the first name. We will just assign it to computers, and that will be the first computer. Really simple. If it looks like a computer, most likely it's a computer. Right. You can also give this a description if you had to go in and, and um, you know, fix it where the, it pulls the operating system and all that stuff. But we have tools out there that will do all of this stuff for us when you go to the new site you can give it a description if you wanted to but you can do this in powershell as well when you need to clean up active directory and all that good stuff play with this around so you can get familiarized with active directory users is the same thing now you can create a user from scratch and go new here or if you wanted to 
create a user that have the same permissions of a user that already have permissions, you can right click and click copy. So basically, if you look at administrator, right, it's a member of all of these. So let's say you have a template that's already made. Maybe this user work in your, your, um, your S1. Maybe they work into HR or they could be in um, your operations cell. And operations have um, basically groups that everyone in operations need to be a part of. If you create a template, right, that you know all the operations guys will have access to, you can do the same thing here. If it's a template, just right click the template. Once you're creating it, you, you would right click and you click copy. Once you create this new user, they're going to copy basically the permissions from that template. So everything here that they're, this user is a part of, that user will also be a part of as well. So let's say, for example, so first name, I'm going to call Chief. It's not real, my first name, but I'm just going to say Chief. And last name. There you go. And my username will be how you like that. So my username is Chief Boogie, and it will be Chief Boogie at Chief.home.lab. Go ahead and create next. Password never expires. I don't want to change my password on the next password login. If you're doing this where you want the user to change your password, you put your default password in, you'll give it out to the users. Um, hey, this is how you log in. And then they'll have to change it. Now, in certain organizations, now we use what's called um, smart card login. So that is a different technique that you have to configure on your Active Directory box, set it up so that the users can actually authenticate with their cat card. That's a little bit more, um, those are different services that you have to set up and configure. And it's, it can be painful when you're working with certificates. But once you figure it out, life is glory, okay? We're not going to get into that right now because those are like the more advanced steps of figuring out Active Directory. I want to show you the basics right now so we can get through it. Once the basics are done and we can, you know, manage this piece, we can go more in depth into configuring Active Directory certificates and all that good stuff. All right. So default password, just give it a password that I want to log in with. And then I'm going to say password never expire and leave that alone. That's fine. This is if you want the user can't change your password. Click next. It's probably going to tell me that my password is not good enough. Oh, good. It took it. All right. So now, like I was saying, if I go to properties and I check out Chief Boogie, now you can see right here combined member off is the same thing I was showing you that once you do a copy, is going to take the same permissions and transfer them over from that user. So then you don't have to keep doing this all over again. And then you can also basically use PowerShell to create all of the users you want, all of the computers, all of the groups. Um, you can have this being created from a template as well. You can have it coming from an Excel spreadsheet where the Excel spreadsheet is, is filled out and then you run this um, script like daily or whenever you want to create um, accounts, it will pull it from the spreadsheet and create them. I will show you this because I have one that's built. Um, so maybe in version two, when we're going through this, I'll, I'll walk you through some more advanced ways of creating users and groups. Because I'm telling you right now, you're not going to sit here and create 250 users by click, click, click. You need to learn PowerShell. This is not going to happen. I know I wouldn't be doing that. There's no way. And especially if you're working in a big organization, there's no way you're going to sit here and create 250, 500 um, user accounts. But what if you were in an organization that has over 5,000 people? That is a lot of accounts. And this is why I'm saying scripting comes into play because once you have a list of all the users that's already filled out, you press that button and you go have more coffee. All right? It's too easy. So there you go. And the profile settings and everything, everything that came over from this guy 
will still be the same. You're just taking the same exact permissions and you're just giving it to um, the other guy, right? This was a built-in account that's used. You can give the permissions depending on the directory, depending on what you're working on. This is how it will come over. All right, so one good thing I want you want to do, you want to test, you can test the login pieces for this. So for example, you have Chief Boogie. This is my login for, right? As you can see, I have an account and I can log in at with Chief Boogie is my username. That's where it will be. So the user needs to log in just like this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and log off for right here. And now let's try to log in back with That's my login name. And if the username that I created works, then it should let me in. So there you go. First time logging in, it's created a new account. And as you can see, the person that I'm logging now is Chief Boogie. That was a user that I created. Guys, it's really simple. It was not too hard going through this process. This is the basic overview. I hope you enjoyed this session i didn't want to take you out too far um just because i'm trying to break up the sessions into smaller bits and pieces for you to kind of understand where we're going the next step for this would be to configure dns but we're going to get into dns a little bit later on um because i want you to configure it actually properly um tools active directory users and Computers will go back in and as you can see That's the computer that I created if I was logged into a new user it has permissions and You can see all the users that are actually here one cool thing. I want to show you before we leave um, Go to actions and turn on um, Not actions go to view and turn on advanced features when you turn on advanced features you will notice that the hierarchy grew a little bit. That means there are kind of some type of hidden structure that is in the back end here, like you lost and found um, and all that stuff. But it actually helps because, for example, let's look at our users. Um, you will see, I'm looking for folks keep calling me. You will see Chief Boogie here. If I go to properties, this expanded more. And one thing I wanted to show you is an object uh, attribute editor right here. If you're trying to figure out where you sit on for your distinguished name, this is how you would look inside of Active Directory. So if you're trying to ever figure out where you want to put your users when they created with scripting wise, go to advanced features and this is how it would be. CN equal chief boogie, which is a name which you're falling into users, DC equal chief which is the fully qualified domain name so this is how we'll break it down dc equal chief right dc equal home this equal lab something for the advanced level that's coming but i just wanted to show you right here this is where you would find this stuff advanced features okay and do remember when you want to delete stuff if you check that box right there right it's going to prevent you from making the mistakes of um deleting oh my gosh folks keep calling me of deleting it um from your active director box right so protect yourself when you building these out come up with a good structure your organization will also have this probably already made out for you so you don't have to worry about how things go you just have to follow um and 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 build all right guys until next time i really appreciate you um we will rebuild this in powershell which is going to be the next phase to come along so you can see how all of this was already built out um again so please don't forget to like and subscribe hit that bell button so you can get notifications um, i want to continue growing this channel so we need to teach our youngers to replace us um just the basics just to get there get there you know get some hands-on training 
things that um, I know I'm trying to pass down so that my guys that are replacing me will have the ability without having to pay anything. It's like, this is free stuff. Um, just going down, passing on just basic knowledge, right? So thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.